rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. A él, cabeza de la creación, a él que lo creó todo con su amor, de la creación 
Como yo lo conoció 
seas también hijo mío con mis ojos tuve que contemplar al cuerpo que yo di a luz a mi amor vilmente traicionado vendido crucificado y cruelmente llevado a Señor, lo rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. Sus dolores me atormentaron, yo vi su amor en la Se quebrantó dentro de mí, en mi dolor por él. A él, a mi Señor, lo rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor hasta que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. A él, cabeza de la creación, a él que lo creó todo con su amor, Corazón se 
se quebrantó dentro de mí en mi dolor por él a mi Señor lo rechazaron que nos ha dado su amor hasta Okay, hello everyone. Hi. Sorry I didn't post today's show. I prepared it in plenty of time, but I forgot to put up the little notification. Apologies. But uh, here I am, and I'm excited about today's show because uh, obviously it's a Friday of Lent, and um, I thought it would be really nice to do Stations of the Cross. And I do have some video from the uh, real places of the Stations of the Cross in Jerusalem, at least for the first few stations. And then um, I'll have to go do artwork for some more of the stations, but it'll be really nice, I think. Anyway, I'm excited. So that's the plan for today. If you don't like the plan, you know where the channel switches. Anyway, uh, anyway, that's the plan for today, for better or for worse. And so I will get started. Uh, did I forget anything? Uh, oh, yes. I didn't have a show yesterday because I was preparing for my trip next week. Uh, Syracuse, I'll be speaking at Transfiguration Parish in Syracuse uh, in nine days from now, Sunday after the uh, traditional Latin Mass, Mass, TLM Mass. They have, I think, a 10.30, and then they're going to have a St. Patrick's Day lunch, and then they're going to have me talk and give my witness testimony. And then on Monday evening, I will be um, hosting a Seder there, Passover Seder in the Light of Christ. And then on Thursday night in Massachusetts, Bellingham, Massachusetts, I've got the name of the parish, St. Brandon's, I think, actually, in Bellingham, Massachusetts, I'll be hosting a Passover Seder. So anyway, I had to do a little preparation for that trip yesterday. And tomorrow, of course, is Saturday, so um, I will be having some form of Radio Maria show. And if I get my act together properly, I'll probably have it also live streamed on my YouTube channel. Okay. Let's get started. Name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin and destruction of souls. Amen. St. Joan of Arc, patroness of France and patroness of our prayer group, we ask you now to fight this battle with us by prayer, just as you led your troops to victory in battle. You who were filled with the Holy Spirit and chosen by God, help us this day with the favor that we ask of you, that we all receive the graces which will result in us getting into heaven with all our loved ones, and that you intercede to defeat the current attempt to enslave humanity under the One World Antichrist government. Grant us by your divine and powerful intercession the courage and strength we need to endure this constant fight and to emerge victorious. Saint Joan, pious daughter of the Church, pray for us. Amen. And since one of the stations on the way of the cross is the pavement 
in front of Pontius Pilate's palace, where the Jews cried out, His blood be on us and on our children. I'm, uh, I'm being a little bit sloppy there. Let me, first of all, put myself up. But since um, actually, actually the station of the condemnation of Jesus is, of course, right next to the pavement where the Jews cried out, his blood be on us and on our children. And, um, there, and of course, that's exactly where there is a convent to of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy, founded by the Radisbone brothers. So for the prayer, I will go back to the litany for the conversion of the Jews from Alphonse Radisbone. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, have pity on the children of Israel. Jesus of Nazareth, divine Messiah, expected by the Jews, have pity on the children of Israel. Jesus of Nazareth, desire of the nations, have pity on the children of Israel. Jesus of Nazareth, who healed the deaf, the dumb, and the blind, have pity on the children of Israel. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But, you know, because we're going to be, in some sense, visiting that pavement, I'm also going to say the prayer of Pius XI. Of old, well, let me wait for Pius XI to show up. Of old, the Jews call down upon themselves the blood of the Savior. May it now descend upon them as a shower of redemption and of life. Amen. Okay, let me fortify myself. Okay, um, this will be a little bit haphazard or ad hoc, um, not fully re rehearsed, but I'm going to start with a video. I'll be listening to the video. I'll be interrupting the video, perhaps, and um, at the appropriate time. Oh, let me bring myself up again, actually. Okay, now, you know it's the three o'clock hour now. You might think, oh, doesn't Roy know he's supposed to be doing the Divine Mercy Chaplet at three and not a Stations of the Cross? Well, I have a passage to read from the uh, Diary of St. Faustina, paragraph 1571. This is the words of Jesus. This is the original message. I remind you, my daughter, that as often as you hear the clock strike the third hour, Immerse yourself completely in my mercy, adoring and glorifying it. Invoke its omnipotence for the whole world, and particularly for poor sinners. For at that moment, mercy was opened wide for every soul. In this hour, you can obtain everything for yourself and for others for the asking. It was the hour of grace for the whole world. Mercy triumphed over justice. My daughter, try your best to make the Stations of the Cross in this hour, provided that your duties permit it. And if you are not able to make the Stations of the Cross, then at least step into the chapel for a moment and adore in the Blessed Sacrament my heart, which is full of mercy. And should you be unable to step into the chapel, immerse yourself in prayer there where you happen to be, if only for a brief instant. I claim veneration for my mercy from every creature, but above all from you, since it is to you that I have given the most profound understanding of this mystery. In other words, Jesus did not ask St. Faustina to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy at three o'clock. He asked St. Faustina to pray the Stations of the Cross at three o'clock. Where did this idea come from that we're supposed to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet at three o'clock? Do you guys want to know that? Well, first of all, it's still a good idea, obviously, because Jesus wants that hour to be the hour of mercy where we are praying for his mercy over the whole world. So, of course, the chaplet of divine mercy is an appropriate way of doing that. But the confusion came about because um, the revelations of St. Faustina were just before World War II. They were not well known. They hadn't been widely disseminated, propagated. And a, if I'm not mistaken, a priest of the um, 
Marians of the Immaculate Conception in Poland knew about the revelations to St. Faustina, was a apostle of the revelations of St. Faustina, and went around introducing people to the devotion of, uh, to the Divine Mercy and to the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, and he got the story wrong. He misremembered it. He made that mistake. So it was actually a mistake. It was his mistake that associated the Chaplet of Divine Mercy with the three o'clock hour. That's the story. I heard it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I certainly heard it from the superior of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy in Boston, Sister Sala at the time. Um, now you could say, does that mean everyone's making a mistake? The answer is, I like what my spiritual director said about that, which was, well, maybe God arranged for that mistake to be made because maybe that's what he decided would be a better thing to do, so to speak. In other words, it was divine providence that the mistake was made. No matter where it came, how it came about, it was divine providence. And um, it certainly should be accepted since it is now the Catholic tradition. And as you may know, I am very suspicious of people who want to change Catholic tradition, even if it's on the basis of, oh, the original was supposed to be something different. So, so we are doing exactly what Jesus originally asked by doing the Stations of the Cross at 3 o'clock, especially on Friday. Right? Can't be better than that. So let me um, put on my headset and go to Jerusalem with you, take you to Jerusalem. Okay, here I am, walking up the Via Dolorosa, and um, I'm walking between the third station and the second station, and that arch you see above me is called Ecce Homo Arch, because it is more or less at the place where Pontius Pilate stood, and... Um, and displayed the condemned Jesus. Uh, the streets, believe me, normally there'd be hundreds of people in the frame of this video, and not just the, the odd dozen. It's Friday, so those are Muslims going to the um, Temple Mount. And uh, here we pass the monastery of Notre Dame de Sion, which is built over, it's built by the Radisbone brothers over the spot where the, G, where the Jews cried, his blood be on us and on our children. Okay, so I was walking up Via Doloroso in the opposite direction, so to speak, of Jesus. Um, and so I just passed the pavement and then about a block further up, we come to actually where the first station was, which is where Pontius Pilate's palace was. In other words, the Jews who were standing in front of Pontius Pilate's palace were on that stretch of road that I just walked past, where the Sisters of Our Lady of Zion convent is. And because I was in front of Pontius Pilate's palace, the pavement, and now we are essentially entering into the property where Pontius Pilate's palace itself was, although it was probably on the other side of the street from um, the side where the um, Franciscan monastery that we're about to enter is. Uh, I'll just go back to the uh, uh, video now. So we went up the street a little bit, we went through a door to the left, and we're now on the grounds of this Franciscan monastery that is um, associated. It's it's basically there are two chapels on the, in the courtyard of this monastery. One is a church uh, dedicated to the flagellation, which is also extremely nearby, so to speak, in the same area in front of uh, Pontius Pilate's uh, palace. 
and also there's a chapel dedicated to G the um, second station, Jesus bearing the cross. Uh, so basically, you have the first station here where Jesus was condemned, also where he was scourged, but that's not a station of the stations of the cross. And then you have the second station where Jesus picked up the cross. So we're just looking around now the uh, courtyard of the Franciscan convent. And that is, so, that is, that's the doorway into the church of the flagellation. Again, it's the uh, church of the flagellation there. We are now, now we just went into the church of the flagellation, the church of the agony. It's, um, built in a courtyard, which is where Jesus was scourged. And um, I'm speaking in a church because I'm the only person here, which is also very atypical. It's because of the current war, of course. There is the stained, beautiful, although modern style, needless to say, stained glass window of Jesus being scourged and um, <sighs> I think the uh, Latin inscription above says that then they took uh, Jesus from Pilate's palace and had him scourged. Pilate's palace was where the Ecce Homo uh, monastery was, I mean it's the spot where the, you know, in front of where Pilate's palace was. Maybe I'll um, show you the, the uh, mosaic in the ceiling here. Perhaps you can see the door of the tabernacle there. And then the uh, mosaic in the ceiling above, let me zoom out, is a crown of thorns. Whoops is a crown of thorns. I'm just going to interrupt myself for a moment. Um, the uh, First of all, there was a slip of the tongue when I walked into the church. I said Church of the Agony. I meant to say Church of the Flagellation. One of the beautiful things, wonderful things about these churches uh, in the Holy Land is the entire, everything in the church reflects the event that that church is commemorating. And so since this is the where the flagellation took place, where the condemnation took place, uh, and where the crowning with thorns took place, everything in the church is dedicated to those three things. You have this beautiful mosaic on the ceiling of the thorns. Um, you had the, uh, maybe we'll see it exiting, but you saw the some of the brickwork in the front is... Um, designed to reflect the, the, crown, the crown of thorns and the door of the tabernacle. Maybe I can go back a little bit to the door of the tabernacle. I'll go back to that anyway later. But there you see the door of the tabernacle is Jesus crowned with thorns. So everywhere, um, everywhere you look in the church uh, and all the stained glass windows are events uh, that took place on that spot. Uh, and I'll be showing the stained glass windows in a moment is a crown of thorns. Whoops. It is a crown of thorns. It is a crown of thorns. Let's see what the other windows are. And there is Pontius Pilate washing his hands of course, when he said, I am innocent of this, oh, that's what it's, um, anyway, and uh, of course, that's when the Jews cried out, his blood be on us and our children. And uh, this window, which is a little bit harder to, to make out, it's a little bit too dark, maybe I can lighten it. There. 
It is um, when the crowd called out, it's tole, tole hunk et demita nobis brabas. So essentially, take him and release for us brabas. The, um, the other window, um, it got flipped out accidentally, but the Latin on it said, it was a quote when Pontius Pilate said, um, I wash my hands of the blood of this just man. I think that's what it, I think that's what it said. And then again, the uh, tabernacle. Whoops. With the crown with thorns, Jesus, and the window above. Okay, I'm going to leave the church now, I think. Or perhaps just stay a little bit and pray. Okay, so now, now we're uh, moving across the little courtyard to the second station where... G oh, you know what? I forgot. <laughs> we're doing the Stations of the Cross. Okay. So... Um, so I'm going to do St. Faustina's Stations of the Cross, which is what I like to do when I'm in Jerusalem, actually. I like to use hers. Uh, it's just because it's... Um, I, anyway, I just really like them. <laughs> How's that? And also, actually, uh, it's more conducive for... Um, usually you're trying to kneel in the street with, you know, hundreds of people pushing past you. So St. Faustina's Stations are actually kind of more conducive for doing in that setting. So I, I'm going to start. I'm, I'm using her stations from the cross from this lovely little booklet, God Who is Rich in Mercy, which comes from the Sisters of St. Faustina, the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy, which is St. Faustina's order. Introductory Prayer. Merciful Lord, my Master, I want to follow you faithfully. I desire to imitate you in my life in a way that will be more and more perfect. Therefore, I am praying that by meditating on your passion, you will give me the grace of a greater understanding of the mysteries of the spiritual life. Mary, Mother of Mercy, ever faithful to Christ, lead me in the footsteps of the sorrowful passion of your Son and obtain for me the graces necessary to fruitfully observe this way of the cross. I offer it for the intention of, and you know what? We can insert our own intentions here and we can make a Jesus multiplier or a Mary Jesus multiplier and ask Jesus to apply the graces of all of our stations of the cross to each of our intentions. How's that? So let's wait a moment and think of our intention. and seal it with a Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay, now the, the, that thing says the second station. It shouldn't say the second station because we're still at the first station. So let me read the prayers for the first station. Jesus, first station, this is where we were. Jesus is condemned to death. The chief priests in the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Jesus speaking. Do not be surprised that you are sometimes unjustly accused. I myself first drank this cup of undeserved suffering for love of you. When I was before Herod, I obtained a grace for you, namely that you would be able to rise above human scorn and follow faithfully in my footsteps. These are all quotes, by the way. The, the lines of Jesus are all quotes from... Um, St. Faustina's Diary. St. Faustina, 
We are sensitive to words and quickly want to answer back without taking any regard as to whether it is God's will that we should speak. A silent soul is strong. No adversities will harm it if it perseveres in silence. The silent soul is capable of attaining the closest union with God. That's also, those are direct quotes from the diary. Merciful Jesus, help me to accept every human judgment and do not let me ever condemn you in my neighbor. Okay, so that was the first station. Now we're at the second station. I guess I'll show the station first and then I will um, do the prayer for the station. We're now in another church in the same courtyard of the same monastery. And there is Jesus being given the cross. And um, the um, above, along the, uh, I'll just do a 360 here. You see the um, scripture quotes that says Matthew 27, 24 to 26. And uh, again, the, the altar here. Oh, and, uh, and a rather uh, powerful statue of Jesus carrying the cross here. There we go. Okay, I will close this little chapel visit. Okay. The second station, oops, I'm not here. Not that that's terribly important. Here we are. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. First, reading from the Gospel according to John. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown of, out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Uh, and again, the words of Jesus and the words of St. Faustina in this meditation are straight from the diary. Jesus do not be afraid of sufferings, I am with you. The more you will come to love suffering, my daughter, the pure your love for me will be. St. Faustina, Jesus, I thank you for the little daily crosses, for opposition to my endeavors, for the hardships of communal life, for the misinterpretation of my intentions, for humiliations at the hands of others, for the harsh way in which we are treated, for false suspicions, for poor health and loss of strength, for self-denial, for de dying to myself, for lack of recognition in everything, for the upsetting of all my plans. Merciful Jesus, teach me to value the toil of life, sickness, and every suffering. Teach me to carry this cross every day with love. Okay, now we come to the third station, and this is where I've cheated you a little bit, because the rest of the stations are not from Jerusalem. Um, maybe I can recover the last, um, the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, maybe I'll try to recover them from Jerusalem. Uh, but uh, in between here and the ninth station, they are going to be pictures because the stations themselves were closed, essentially. There are little chapels at the various stations on the Via Doloroso, but the little chapels were all locked because there were no pilgrims. 
so there were no pilgrims and people you know the guards were not there and the the doors were locked so um let's go on to the third station and uh oh i'll have a little uh in the background uh, a little harp a day maybe so let's see if this works hmm let's see what happens here Okay, so there's, the, um, um, there's the third station, Jesus Falls, and you can tell me whether the music is too loud or too soft or something. Um, these are now the meditations of St. Faustina for the third station. Um, first of all, the scripture quote from Isaiah, we had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of all, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. Uh, Jesus, my daughter, Write that involuntary offenses of souls do not hinder my love for them or prevent me from uniting myself with them. But voluntary offenses, even the smallest, obstruct my graces and I cannot lavish my gifts on such souls. Sister Faustina, O oh my Jesus, how prone I am to evil and this forces me to be constantly vigilant but I do not lose heart. I trust God's grace, which abounds in the worst misery. And then the prayer, Merciful Lord, save me from every voluntary and conscious infidelity, even the smallest. Amen. Okay, um, the next um, station is... Um, Jesus meets his mother. Let me zoom in a little bit. Make that a little more obvious. Jesus meets his mother. The scripture, again from Luke, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword shall pierce. Jesus speaking, Listen, my daughter, although all the works that come into being by my will are exposed to great sufferings, consider whether any of them has been subject to greater difficulties than that work which is directly mine, the work of redemption. So you should not worry too much about adversities. St. Faustina, I saw the Blessed Virgin she held me close to herself and said to me, Be courageous. Do not fear apparent obstacles, but fix your gaze upon the passion of my son, and in this way you will be victorious. And the prayer, Mary, Mother of Mercy, be with me always, and especially in suffering, in the same way as you were on the way of the cross of your son. The fifth station, Simon the Cyrenian helps Jesus to carry the cross. The reading from Luke, as they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon a Cyrenian who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. Jesus. I permit these adversities in order to increase his merit. I do not reward for good results, but for the patience and hardship undergone for my sake. Sister Faustina, O oh my Jesus, 
You do not give a reward for the successful performance of a work, but for the good will and labor undertaken. Therefore, I am completely at peace, even if all my undertakings and efforts should be thwarted or should come to naught. If I do all that is in my power, the rest is not my business. And the prayer, O Jesus my Lord, let every thought, word, and action be undertaken exclusively out of love for you. Purify my intentions. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. From Isaiah, there was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom men hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Jesus, know that whatever you, good you do to any soul, I accept it as if you had done it to me. Sister Faustina, I am learning how to be good from Jesus from him who is goodness itself, so that I may be called a daughter of the Heavenly Father. Great love can change small things into great ones, and it is only love which lends value to our actions. And the prayer, Lord Jesus, my Master, make merciful my eyes, hands, lips, heart. Keep transforming me into mercy. Seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. Still from Isaiah, yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. Jesus, the cause of your falls is that you rely too much upon yourself and too little on me. Without special help from me, you are not even capable of accepting my graces. Sister Faustina, Jesus, do not leave me alone. You know, Lord, how weak I am. I am an abyss of wretchedness. I am nothingness itself. So what will be so strange if you leave me alone and I fall? So you, Jesus, must stand by me constantly, like a mother by a helpless child, and even more so. And the prayer, may your grace, Lord, support me so that I may not constantly fall into the same errors and when I fall, help me to get up and praise your mercy. The eighth station, Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. Let me try to expand this a little bit. There we go. Um, the quote from Luke, a large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves. Jesus, oh, how pleasing to me is living faith, I desire that you would all have more faith at the present time. Sister Faustina, I fervently beg the Lord to strengthen my faith so that in my drab everyday life I will not be guided by human dispositions but by those of the Spirit. Oh, how everything drags man towards the earth. But lively faith maintains the soul in the higher regions and assigns self-love its proper place. That is to say, the lowest one. And I am going to take a moment. Um, maybe I will uh, disappear. Maybe I'll try to make it a slow disappearance here. And um, I'll leave the music on and I'll try to find the pictures of the actual places for the 9th, 10th, 
11th, 12th, 13th, 14th stations. I'm sorry I, I was ill-prepared or I was, I forgot that I had pictures that I might be able to use is basically what happened. So, um, let me see what I, what I can do here. Oh boy. Oh. Well, for better or for worse, I found some. Um, okay. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. Okay. Uh, the ninth station. Now this is um, uh, actually this is actually the roof of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, um, and it is uh, essentially the the spot of the third fall. It's essentially kind of right above the uh, crucifixion itself is now you know the the church is built over the side of the crucifixion and this is um the last place one goes on the via dolorosa before entering the church and it's associated with the third fall of jesus the ninth station jesus falls the third time uh, from isaiah though he was harshly treated he submitted and opened not his mouth like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before its shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. Jesus, my child, know that the greatest obstacles to holiness are discouragement and an exaggerated anxiety. These will deprive you of the ability to practice virtue. I am always ready to forgive you, as often as you beg for it, you glorify my mercy. St. Faustina, my Jesus, despite your graces, I see and feel all my misery. I begin my day with battle and end it with battle. As soon as I conquer one obstacle, ten more appear to take its place. But I am not worried because I know that this is a time of struggle, not peace. And then the prayer Merciful Lord, I give you this, which is exclusively my own property, that is, my sin and human weakness. I beg of you, let my wretchedness be drowned in your unfathomable mercy. And now, on to the Tenth station, um, and I will use this. Now we entered the church. There's a door, one of those. Um, oh, do I even have the the uh, pointer here? I don't think I even have the pointer here. Um, uh, let me get the pointer. Um, 
Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a little silly of me. I'm I'm working too hard. But anyway, uh, we're back on the roof, and that is actually the door that you enter to go into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre from the roof, and then you go through the chapels of um some of the uh, sects that have very relatively low value real estate in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And in fact, as long as I'm um, doing this, I will uh, combine it. Do you see that? <laughs> that is the lodging of the, I believe, Ethiopian monks. They didn't even get real estate inside the church. They got, they got to build little huts, so to speak, on the roof of the church. I think those are the Ethiopian uh, uh, monks. So anyway, but anyway, so now we're going in that uh, doorway there. And we will go down and we will go to the uh, Calvary where the crucifixion took place for the uh, next few stations. And uh, let me... Uh, uh, okay, so... Oh boy... I don't like that because I'm in the picture. Okay, this is better. Oh, you can see everything. I forgot that. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but anyway, here we are in Calvary. And, uh, uh, boy, I better get the finger. The finger going again. Um... Yeah. Okay, so we're in Calvary, and um, this is a little bit too close up, but you see that uh, corpus. That's where the cross was. That's where the cross was. That's where the cruci where the crucifixion took place. Do you see that stone? That's the stone that the cross was planted in. Do you see this little altar there and that little holy, the little hollow place? You can. Uh, crawl in there on your knees. That's why it's built like that. So you have to go on your knees and you can stick your hand down into the hole, into the square hole that the foot of the cross was planted in. And then uh, right next to the site, the spot of the crucifixion, you see a um, altar that's dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the sword piercing her heart. And then right... Um, Right to the right of the site of the crucifixion itself, you have a chapel dedicated to uh, Jesus being crucified, Jesus being nailed to the cross. And there you see um, the top of the mosaic of him being nailed to the cross. Rather than um, using that mosaic for the next station, whoops, I am going to use... I'm going to use this mosaic, uh, not mosaic, excuse me, fresco, which is um, which is on the ceiling there on Golgotha, which shows Jesus being nailed to the cross. And I'll use that both for him being stripped of his garments and him being nailed to the cross. So the 10th tenth, tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. When the soldiers took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They t also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, driven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of the scripture might be fulfilled. For his vestiment they cast lots. Okay. Uh, St. Faustina. Jesus was suddenly standing before me, stripped of his clothes, his body completely covered with wounds, his eyes flooded with tears and blood, 
his face disfigured and covered with spittle. The Lord then said to me, The bride must resemble her betrothed. St. Faustina, I understood these words to their very depth. There is no room for doubt here. My likeness to Jesus must be through suffering and humility. And the prayer, Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, touch my heart and make it like your own. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. From Matthew, those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who will destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders marked, mocked him and said, He saved others, he could not save himself. He trusts in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. Jesus, my pupil, have great love for those who cause you suffering. Do good to those who hate you. St. Faustina, O oh my Jesus, you know what efforts are needed to live sincerely and unaffectedly with those from whom our nature flees, or with those who deliberately or not have made us suffer. Humanly speaking, this is impossible. At such times, more than at others, I try to discover the Lord Jesus in such a person, and for this same Jesus, I do everything for such people. The Prayer O purest love, rule in all your fullness in my heart, and let me love even the things that, humanly speaking, are impossible to love. The twelfth station, Jesus uh, dies on the cross. Whoops. Okay. Okay, Jesus dies on the cross, and here we're back on the top of Calvary, at the very spot where he died on the cross. The, um, I'll bring the finger back up. And, uh, whoops. There is where Jesus died on the cross. That's where the cross was. And that is where the hole in the rock is that the cross was planted into. Jesus dies on the cross. From the Gospel according to John. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole world until three, and the whole land until three in the afternoon. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. Jesus speaking, All this is for the salvation of souls. Consider well, my daughter, what you are doing for their salvation. St. Faustina, Then I saw the Lord nailed to the cross, when he had hung on it for a while, I saw a multitude of souls crucified like him. Then I saw a second multitude of souls and a third. The second multitude were not nailed to their crosses, but were holding them firmly in their hands. The third were neither nailed to their crosses nor holding them firmly in their hands, but were dragging their crosses behind them and were discontent. Jesus then said to me, Do you see those, these souls? Those who are like me in the pain and contempt they suffer 
will be like me also in glory, and those who resemble me less in pain and contempt will also bear less resemblance to me in glory. The prayer, O Jesus my Savior, hide me in the depth of your heart so that strengthened by your grace I may imitate you in the love of the cross and participate in your glory. The 13th station, Jesus is laid in the arms of the Blessed Mother. And um, for this, I think I may have to go to a painting because the spot where it happened actually was walled off as a construction site when I was there. They were doing some some repairs to a staircase adjacent to it. So um, let me um, uh, let me do this. And uh, how can I do this? Okay. Um, okay, so. Okay, so I'll, I'll go to this painting. And I'll shrink myself a little bit. There. Okay, the um, 13th station, Jesus is laid in the arms of his blessed mother. From Luke, the centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts, but all his acquaintances stood at a distance. Jesus, most dear to me is the soul that strongly believes in my goodness and has complete trust in me. I heap my confidence upon it and give it all it asks. St. Faustina, I fly to your mercy, compassionate God, who alone are good. Although my misery is great and my offenses are many, I trust in your mercy, because you are the God of mercy. And from time immemorial it has never been heard of, nor do heaven or earth remember, that a soul trusting in your mercy has been disappointed. Prayer, merciful Jesus, every day increase within me trust in your mercy, so I may always and everywhere give witness to your infinite goodness and love. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. And here we have the tomb. Now, what you're looking at is a small chapel, a very early church built over the tomb. Um, inside that little church, in the, in the back, kind of six feet of it, is the tomb itself. And um, it's a little inner chamber. And there is a... a um, horizontal like casket of stone which is where the, the body of Jesus lay it didn't lay in that stone casket it's the spot where it lay is like a marble you know a marble um, coffin you know placed there to sort of mark the spot and um, if you're very blessed you can have mass inside it holds about four people in that small space. Actually, it holds either three or five people, depending on whether <laughs> whether there are any fat people or not. And uh, the priest stands right over the coffin and a um, kind of a, a altar is laid on top of the coffin. And that's where the Eucharist, that's where the mass takes place. I didn't take pictures inside, uh, although lots of people do. Um, you're not supposed to, and it seemed irreverent. So, so this is, but this is the tomb. Okay, Jesus is laid in the tomb, the 14th station. 
They took the body of Jesus and bound it with the burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, which no one had yet been buried in. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, because the tomb was close by. Jesus, you are not yet in your homeland. So go, fortified by my grace, and fight for my kingdom and human souls. Fight as a king's child would. And remember that the days of your exile will pass quickly, and with them, the possibility of earning merit for heaven. I expect from you a great number of souls who will glorify my mercy for all eternity. St. Faustina Every soul you have entrusted to me, Jesus, I will try to aid with prayer and sacrifice, so that your grace can work in them. O great lover of souls, my Jesus, I thank you for the immense confidence with which you have deigned to place souls in our care. Prayer Merciful Lord, I pray for the souls that you have entrusted to me. Do not let any of them perish, not even one. And now the prayer after the way of the cross. O oh my Jesus, my only hope, thank you for the book which you have opened before my soul's eyes. The book is your passion, which you underwent for the love of me. It is from this book that I have learned how to love God and souls. In this book there are found for us inexhaustible treasures. O oh Jesus, how few un souls understand you in your martyrdom of love. Happy the soul that has come to understand the love of the heart of Jesus from paragraph 304 of St. Faustina's Diary. And so for the, um, for the indulgence associated with the Stations of the Cross, which we may or may not have legitimately earned, we may or may not get it, but let's close with an Our Father, a glory, uh, a, Our Father, Hail Mary and Glory Be. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And with that ends our Stations of the Cross from Jerusalem. I hope you enjoyed it. Next year in Jerusalem, right? I hope you come with me next year. Um, I hope I'm able to make, do it again next year. Or maybe even this November, we'll see. Right now, I'm kind of sorry I canceled the May trip, to tell the truth. But the air, air tickets, air deposits were due and that I couldn't handle. Okay, on my YouTube channel. When you go up on my YouTube channel, you can click on live. And if you click on the live shows, you'll also see the um, past ones. Um, uh, yes. Yes. So anyway, so so really, they're they're up on YouTube forever, or until until I get bounced off of YouTube. Um, anyway, bon bon voyage, Antonia. I hope you have a fruitful. I hope it's a pilgrimage, but a fruitful trip. And um, Rory, what is it between the two red candles at the spot of the cross? A tabernacle. I can't tell from the picture. Okay. I'll, I'll, I, you know me, I love to babble, so I'll go back to that picture and we'll figure out what's going on there. 
So uh, first let me pull up that picture because things are not really obvious to me where things are. Okay. Um, I don't know. That's the one I want to use. That's not the one I want to use. That's not the one I want to use. That's not the one I want to use. Okay, I'll get it. I'll find it. Okay. And I better bring up the finger again so that I can do some pointing here. Okay. There. Okay. So what you have is this is a small altar. I've never seen anyone celebrate mass on it, but it is an altar. It's just about maybe five feet by three feet or something like that. You see, it's a marble altar. And then under the altar is a cavity that you can crawl in on your knees, shuffle in on your knees. And so those two candles are candles on top of the altar and at the foot of the cross. And then, um, uh, the, and then there's a icon there. And then down here at the bottom, let me see if I can, if I can, uh, if I can move this at all. If I can move this up a little. Yeah, there. Sorry, this will make it a lot clearer. A lot clearer. Sorry about that. I should have been aware of that. Um, this is the floor, okay? This is the marble floor. There's a little rug there, there. But anyway, so you shuffle forward on your knees on the, across the marble floor, and you shuffle into that hole. And then when you get into that hole, let me try to uh, see if I can enhance the picture any. Um, hmm. Let's see if I can do this. If I, perhaps, if I make it brighter, yeah, that helps, and uh, enhance the contrast. Yeah, that actually kind of works. Okay, so um, now you can see better inside the hole, and you see that, um, you see there's the, still a marble floor, and right under the icon, you see that that's like a, a gold colored, a brass um, disc. And that disc has a hole in the middle. There's a hole in the middle. It's about six inches across the hole. And you can stick your hand down that hole. And when you sweep your hand around that hole, it is square. It's square cut. And that is the hole in the stone that held the foot of the cross. And, uh, of course, it's, it's covered in that marble, so you don't see it as the original stone. But they left the original stone exposed on the two sides of that little altar. So that's what the actual top of Golgotha looked like. That's actually the top of the hill. And then, um, and then where the uh, crucifix was is directly there. Right there is the, is the square hole. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> Very neat. I have one more slide I'll, I'll pull up. I, I, I like doing this too much, I guess. Some people just are frustrated tour guides or something. I don't know. So let me see where I have one. Because my, my slides are like totally unsorted. And I may not even have one. Uh, it's not there. Yeah, who knows? I, you know, the problem is that um, I don't really, I don't take pictures like you guys would when you're visiting the Holy Land for your, you know, only time in your life or one of one or two times in your life. Um, you know, since I go there regularly, I tend to be a little bit... Um, you know, I don't take the same pictures every time, I guess is what it amounts to. So I don't think I, I don't, I can't find it. So uh, maybe I'll do another travelogue thing. But anyway, right under here is really neat because right under here, there's a chapel, which is the, um, which shows the rock from beneath. And it shows the split in the rock where it was split open when the, you know, when the earthquake happened and when the, 
rock beneath the crucifix split open. You can see the split. There's actually even a little measuring device that, you know, that measures the split, whether it gets wider or, or not, and so forth. So anyway, that's that. Okay. That makes sense. So now I really will go. Oh, here, here's the question. Here's another Here's another, uh, I guess I won't go because I'm so, so, I don't know what the word is. Incorrigible, I guess, is the word. Okay, here we go. Here's the, this was the, uh, obviously, the, the show card. And uh, you know who that is. Do you, can you read that? Can you read that? It says, Holy Sepulchre, up there. That is the entrance to the Holy Sepulchre entrance the courtyard in front of the Holy Sepulchre. And there's a big metal door there that's closed, and that's because it's not yet 4 o'clock in the morning. They opened it at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I would get there a few minutes early so that I could be the f first one in, so that I could go in as soon as it opened up, so I could be there as early as possible when it's as quiet as possible. So I would stand out front there, you know, for 5 or 10 minutes until they open the door and one morning because because it's boring to stand out there i took a selfie in front of the closed door to the holy sepulcher this by the way directly behind me is a small police station that i was always very happy was there because i figured if you know if any anything happened if there was any brouhaha um while i was waiting there at 3 45 in the morning it was nice to know there was a police station there, although actually most of the time it wasn't manned, but it's better than nothing. Okay, that's it. So I will uh, get rid of the finger and I will bring up the music. Gloria which is the music. Oops. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, well, maybe I should do it anyway. I'll bring up the music. With the video, of course. Why? Why just look at me? So, um, so let's see how this works. So, yeah, that's that's what I'll do. I'll put that there, and I will put this there. Okay, and let's see. How this works. Gloria laus et honor tibisit Rex Christe Redemptor That's the wrong, sorry, that's the wrong hymn. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I wanted to keep the, uh... sorry about that, that was the wrong hymn. Okay, okay. I wanted the Lamentations, not the Palm Sunday. That really was quite a, sorry about that, quite a shift in mood there. So let me do this over again. Thanks for putting up with me as always. Little little amateur hour always. Okay, so let's bring that up. There I am. And uh, okay, and there is the video that I wanted. And uh, okay, I think this will work this time.
Señor, lo rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. Escuché su grito hacia el Padre, el grito por la vida, nadie como yo lo conoció, al Hijo de Dios que es también Hijo mío. Con mis ojos tuve que contemplar al cuerpo que yo di a luz, a mi amor vilmente traicionado, vendido, crucificado y cruelmente llevado a muerte. Señor, lo rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. Sus dolores me atormentaron, yo vi su amor en la corazón se quebrantó dentro de mí, en mi dolor por él. A él, a mi Señor, lo rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor. Hasta la cruz. Ah. Señor, lo rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. A él, cabeza de la creación, a él que lo creó todo con su amor a él que habita en mí sin igual a él lo rechazaron en la vida de mi vida coronado de espinas por lado y torturado en sus Rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. Escuché su grito hacia el Padre, el grito por la vida, nadie como yo. Conoció al Hijo de Dios que es también Hijo mío. Con mis ojos tuve que contemplar al cuerpo que yo di a luz, a mi amor vilmente traicionado, vendido, cruzado. 
crucificado y cruelmente llevado a muerte. A él, a mi Señor, lo rechazaron, que nos ha dado su amor hasta la cruz. Sus dolores me atormentaron, yo vi su amor en la cruz, mi corazón se quebrantó dentro de mí. Que nos ha dado su amor.